Well, I mean, I think one of the big sort of things that we've seen is it, a commodification, as it were, of science. And so um, it's not necessarily the high tech stuff. You know, it's the fact that if you want to get science supplies today, you can literally you can pop onto Amazon or eBay, you know, um, there's that level of experiment, um, sorry, accessibility. And then of course, today you've got the fact that there are, there are lots and lots of videos, you know, you can go on YouTube or other social media platforms and you can find recipes for, you know, making a particular kind of um, bacterial or, you know, fungal growth and, and, you know, taking that through a, an experiment and it might be, it's very basic stuff, but actually for, people that are not familiar with those, you know, with those processes of life, it can be a game changer. It can really open up their mind to whole new ideas. So I think that is actually quite profound in the sense mm. that, um, you know, science is having, it's starting to have a, a really, really big influence on other domains. And the more influence, influence it has on those other domains, if you like, I mean, although in a sense it sort of democratizes science and that it gives a lot of more people the chance to engage in scientific activities, whether they're a scientist or not, it also inherently shows the value of science. It shows why it's really, really important to understand how things work and the fact that, you know, if you grow that slime mold, well, yeah, if it, if it likes the environment, it's going to creep out of the petri dish and it's going to go over your desk. And, and do you know what I mean? There's that kind of you know, it, it, they're, they're little lessons, but they're actually profound in um, the way they can affect people's thinking. 